The last season, I kind of coined a phrase called the toxicity of the timeline. I thought it was only going to be a couple of weeks before I was able to start playing again. And then a couple of months. And then by the next semester. She said something that kind of made me realize that there are versions of a timeline that are actually helpful for us when going through an injury and coming back. Those deadlines that we set for ourselves can make us push ourselves farther than we are able to go to try and force ourselves to come back to our, to our normal playing schedules, to our normal performing, whatever the case may be. That was basically my, my mindset. It was like, as long as I'm back by fall semester, I'm okay. And then as fall semester got closer and closer, I kept getting worse and worse from a mental standpoint. Instead of saying like what I was saying before, is like deadlines, instead of using deadlines, we use time frames. That way it's just giving you a, a setting for your goal. The time it has no charge to it outside of it just being a framework for your goals, for your recovery. So using timelines as a time frame to set your goals, that is really where I believe that a timeline can be beneficial to you, um, where you can use time to your advantage, where you're using time in a way that you can control. Because you can't control when your body's gonna heal, but you can control how you use the time as it heals. Your injury can become the best thing that ever happened to you. So many people have said that on the show, including me. And that can be you. That can be you. Your setback can become your greatest opportunity. Hey, welcome back everybody to the show. I'm so excited to share this topic with you today. It's been one that's been floating around my mind for a little while. One of the biggest lessons that I learned um, about midway through my injury journey that's still ongoing um, at the time of this recording was the the importance of divorcing myself from a timeline that, that I was giving myself to get back from an injury. When I first started my injury journey, I thought it was only going to be a couple of weeks before I was able to start playing again. And then a couple of months. And then by the next semester. And all of these arbitrary, not arbitrary, this might be a little bit too harsh of a word, but all these timelines that I was setting for myself, all these deadlines, were really doing things that were detrimental to my health. Uh, my mental health especially. And last season, I kind of coined a phrase called the toxicity of the timeline. Because for me, in my experience, and I'm sure for many of you who are going through injury, those deadlines that we set for ourselves can make us push ourselves farther than we are able to go to try and force ourselves to come back to our, to our normal playing schedules, to our normal performing whatever the case may be. It really is just not a good idea. In my opinion, I, I'd be willing to hear anybody who thinks otherwise um, to have those, those deadlines because you're not going to be able to learn all the lessons and become the person you are able to become if you're allowing yourself to be held back by those deadlines. Um, in the interim between the two sittings, the two seasons, I came across, as I've mentioned on the podcast before, this this resource called the Injured Athletes Club, and they have a Facebook page that I was fortunate enough to join their online community, really just to learn from everybody, all these athletes who have gone through injury um, and what their experiences have been. Um, kind of a maybe weird to say this, but like a research and development for the show, um, and and really just to be a part of a, another community as well. And I can't remember if I had posted something in the, in the group or if somebody else had posted it and I was just part of a, the comment thread. But the um, organizer of the group and the author of the book, Rebound, Carrie Jackson, commented about what I would think are the healthy ways of looking at a timeline. Um, because ultimately, we measure things in measurements of time in a lot of ways and a lot of circumstances in our lives. And she said something that kind of made me realize that there are versions of a timeline that are actually helpful for us when going through an injury and coming back. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the show. 
I just wanted to jump in here real quick and tell you about something that I'm really, really excited about. For a while now, I have wanted to create an even more effective resource than just the podcast that injured musicians can go to to receive the support that they need. And recently I did just that. So write this down. Trust the Process Podcast Injured Musician Support Group. I know it's a long title. We're still working on that part. But this is a place where people can go now, injured musicians and even musicians who have gone through injury in the past and people that help musicians go through injury where they can go to receive the support that they need, whether that be ask questions, share their victories, share their frustrations, and overall just receive the the community and the support that they need in a very proactive, intentional way. And so I just ask that you guys support these injured musicians by sharing this group with them, that they can receive the support that they need. Okay, enjoy the rest of the show. For example, how we set our goals with regards to a timeline can be actually very beneficial to our recovery. Um, Instead of saying like, I'll be back by fall semester, so we're good until then, but if I am not, I don't know what I'm gonna do. That was basically my, my mindset. It was like, as long as I'm back by fall semester, I'm okay. And then as fall semester got closer and closer, I kept getting worse and worse from a mental standpoint. With this new framework of timelines, or time frames might be a better way to put it, um, these short-term goals will be great ways to look at these time frames. Setting short-term goals for your recovery. Instead of saying, like what I was saying before, is like deadlines, instead of using deadlines, we use time frames. So instead of saying, I will be back to full health on this day, say this week, I'm going to make sure I do my physical therapy three times a day or whatever your doctor says, uh, whatever your professor is telling you to do to help you come back. That way it's just giving you a, a setting for your goal. The time it has no charge to it outside of it just being a framework for your goals, for your recovery. And for me, that was just a really big eye opener because I've kind of been operating on, for my injury recovery, I've been operating under this like, okay, I can't really set a deadline for myself. I can't set a timeline. I'll, it'll just happen when it happens. But that at the same time is not going to help me be proactive to get better, to get my playing back in the timeline that my body needs. Because I, like I said, you're not being proactive when you're doing that. And so using timelines as a time frame to set your goals, that is really where I believe that a timeline can be beneficial to you, Um, where you can use time to your advantage, where you're using time in a way that you can control because you can't control when your body's going to heal, but you can control how you use the time as it heals. So I hope this made sense to you. I just think about you guys all the time. I'm listening to as much material, reading as much material as I can to best serve you guys and become somebody that you guys can feel like you can come to for help. If nothing else, just for a sense of community. That's Again, I've said it a hundred times on this podcast. That's the whole reason why we have this show is to build community, to build conversation about, around musician injury and to help you guys become the people that you want to become, that you can become because of your injury, not despite it. Your injury can become the best thing that ever happened to you. So many people have said that on the show, including me. And that can be you. That can be you. Your setback can become your greatest opportunity. So keep on keeping on and keep trusting the process. We'll see you next time. Hey, before you go, we need your help with something real quick. Somewhere out there, there is a musician who is going through an injury or just a tough time. There may even be an educator with a student in that situation that they don't know how to help. We need your help in getting this message to them. Would you do them the favor of sharing this episode on your socials and with your friends? Also, cliche that it may have become, leaving a rating and a review actually does help people find us, not just boost our ego. So would you take a quick second and leave us a review so that that musician can find us more easily? If you want to reach out to me personally, I would love to hear from you. Just look for the send us a text message button in the show notes of the episode. You can do that on any episode on your chosen podcast platform except YouTube. If you have a suggestion for a guest or topic to cover, shoot me an email at trustprocesspodcast at gmail.com or send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. 
I want to extend another heartfelt thanks to my team, without which this podcast would not be able to happen. Thanks to Daniel Baldwin, our audio engineer, Kevin West, our music and sound effects coordinator, and Dana Lovell, our promotional materials coordinator. So to all of you out there in podcast land, keep on keeping on and trust the process.